I'm glad we talked about this. Now. Glad we talked about what? Another erratic gesture. He's trembling. Yosef Lilionovich Dross. You're under arrest for the murder of Alice Kortnar. What? The old man's eyes fill with sudden unexpected terror at the words. But you said I would be taken to the... This terror is the sum of all the uncontrollable movements and mood swings he's been exhibiting. The wind picks up. The silence on the water is broken all around you. Little shivers of waves appear. The lieutenant continues like an incantation. Your, way for, your wayfarer rights have been suspended. Information provided to the officers on the scene will be used against you by the prosecution. You will be given legal counsel within one week and must face court within 44 days. Do you understand? Do you understand? But... Kim, he's afraid. No. I don't want to. I have to stay here. He looks at the reeds, eyes submerged in growing terror. He's sweating. Beads are forming on his forehead. Your confirmation is not required, sir. Lieutenant turns to you. Now, onto the boat. Perception. Hearing. What is happening to my hearing? <clears throat> did I, also, did I lose my ability to check my screen? Yeah. Motherfucker, why do I have this many skill points? Fuck it, though. All in, motherfucker. Legendary. There it is again. To your north. As it has been since you came to the coast. Did I, like, not level the other things I clicked on earlier or something? I think I did. How did I have that many skill points? Have I really like, gotten that many objectives completed that I leveled up, like, five more times? Or did I just not spend them earlier when I thought I did? Maybe I didn't hit confirm correctly. I don't remember what stuff was at. I can't, I can't tell. There it is again. To your north. As it has been since you came to the coast. The reeds whisper. Stocks rubbing against each other. But then, in the middle of it. What? Something completely different. It sounds like a bow. Very slowly being drawn against the strings of a violin. A very small violin made of reeds and rushes. And then it- and then it's gone. Drowned up by a lieutenant's voice. Maybe there is room for three on the boat. Shh, Kim, do you hear that? What? What are you talking about? Is this- The old man's voice drowns in a sudden gust of wind. Really us? Your skin crawls. Oh shit, is it gonna ha- is it gonna happen? Oh shit! Oh god, it's way bigger than I thought it was. Oh my god, it's way bigger than I thought it was. Oh my god, it gets its own- it gets its own portrait? Wow. Hey, little Cthulhu friend. How you doing? Wow. Okay, so it was- it was always real. And we actually saw- it was- that was- <laughs> That was never gonna fit inside of that trap. It's so much bigger than they ever thought it could be. Even they were wrong, right? Like, even they didn't know how big it was. Maybe it was that size when she saw it. Maybe it grew and kept growing. Maybe it's the same one she saw when she was young. On the same island as our secret person that's also been hiding out for 40 years. This is the no man's land where th anything can exist in secret. Insulindian Phasmid. A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb. To then just stand there, moving in scythe-like arms in ghostly silence. Blink. 
It's still there. An unfolding mechanism of reed-like chitin hovering in place. Oh, it's getting closer. Spooky. What is that? The old man looks at the reeds, then at you. What are you talking about? The giant stick insect. He looks confused. There's nothing there. The stick insect is all... It's over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small head. You feel your legs shaking under you, and your gun hand move to your holster to grab the gun. There is. I see it. Tell me what you see, damn it! I can't make out one small thing in the reeds. Kim, can you see it? I can see it. Oh, you can. Four simple words. Thank God. If he can see, then you're not insane. But that means... It's really there. Spinning, slowly, in absolute silence. Its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful. Lieutenant whispers. Then takes a step towards the giant anthropod. Oh my god! I'm gonna name... It's real. <laughs> How's that for a save name? What's, what's my inventory? Oh, this is Inspect the Phasmid, right. What's over here? Items. Oh. The Trangong 446. Price, 70 real. The bolt-action 4.46 caliber Trian Gong is a poor man's sniper rifle. While not the most reliable of firearms, it's relatively precise due to a very manageable recoil, thus allowing the shooter to take multiple consecutive shots fast. This particular piece is missing a scope, though. Oh. Ah. Where's his scope? Why can only two of us see it? I have just a multitude of questions at this point, honestly. I was glad I was able to pump into perception there. I'm like, fuck it. It's such a late game check, and this seems so pivotal, whatever the hell I'm noticing in the middle of this like climactic moment, so I'm just gonna go for it. Still keeping one foot out of the water, though. I still leave one skill point sitting around. The creature stands on long, stilt-like le like legs, antenna hanging from its head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it, pr it produces a faint hiss, like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. The hi oh no. Oh, that's a pretty good chance, though. The hiss is different from the strings you heard before. It says something else in a lower pitch. Listen carefully. Sss. I'm not gonna. Yeah, it's like sissistic. <laughs> this is the Insulindian Phasmid. It is. The lieutenant whispers behind you. You hear the familiar ring of his jacket unzipping slowly, painstakingly so. You glance over your shoulder. The man holds a piece of milled aluminum. He begins to... He, he pulls it open extremely carefully. It's the camera. Oh, he only had two shots, right? Didn't he use one for the... To take a picture of the tattoos and he's been saving the other photo this entire time? No. The flash will scare the creature off. Warn him now. Kim, the flash is loud. It won't like that. We need a photo. No one will believe us. He continues to pull the lens open. From the corner of your eye, you see a sudden cascade of motion ripple across the phasmid's limbs. A series of ultrasonic clicks fills your ear. Stop. Let me approach it first. I won't be one of those fools who didn't take a picture. 
He has stopped fiddling with the camera, but does not put it down. How fast could it possibly get away? If it starts leaving, just snap the shot, right? You see the phasmid turn to him, its mandible antennae reaching out. The motions are quick, sudden. I have the pheromone. I can approach it. I don't think the pheromone will do anything. His whisper turns to a skeptical hiss, but he has stopped now. The spindly mechanism turns itself back to you, its antenna taking their measure of the air slowly. Mm. Say something to it quietly, something like... Don't be afraid. Nothing changes in the cyclical, praying motion of the creature's limbs. They are porcelain white on the inside, and reed colored on the out. Beige, light, brown, and striped. You are unsure if it is scared or not. Its insect mind is impenetrable to your reasoning. We only get one chance. I don't know why this is grayed out, by the way, like it's not full of stuff I can do. No! The electrochemistry can't be increased. Ever. Don't fuck me, game. Approach it. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps towards the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter. A sort of happiness. The tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you to take in and expel air. It's smelling you. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antenna to greet you. You're right below it now, looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds and its eyes are like small droplets of water. Raise your hand, slowly. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. Put your hand down. The invertebrate comes back to life. Stridulating, sets of complex eyes following you, moving in tandem on either side of the insect's small head. It's smelling me. Maybe it is real, the pheromone. Lieutenant's mouth is agape. The insect's head is crowned with reed-like scales, the shape of seed heads. They rustle as the air moves. The ventricles in its abdomen continue to expanding like lunglets. Breathing you in, your sour, greasy, semio chemicals on the breeze. Hello. I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total, ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations on its limbs continue all around you. Stand on your tiptoes to look more closely. You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on a segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. A faint smell, like you've never felt before. Like burnt roses. Kim, it's foaming. Careful. It may be poisonous. Lieutenant watches you apprehensively. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. Little bubbles begin to burst one by one, letting out that same smell, like summer burning. Inland Empire 2. 
spoke to the hanged man, did not give up on the phasmid, and knows of parthenogenesis. A lot of bonuses right there. Why not? Might regret that. <laughs> but I want these things to happen. Oh, I should have tried it. I should have tried it first and then tried again. I exist. I exist too. Tell me what it's like for you. Oh, he's look he's looking straight into my eyes now. It's wunderbar. <laughs> If I tell you what will happen, then I will tell you what it's like for me. For me, it's fire burning. Fire? Where? Inside. I do not have fire inside me. In me, there is not even blood, but lymph, like sap from a wine palm. Now I will tell you what it's like for me. For me, it is a series of half-lit images, a kind of darkness, being intruded upon, transient, dim, moist. Intruded upon. By what? Shapes of plants and animals, and internal sensations, a swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the so inside of my forearms, all speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of a narrow funnel, weightless, so light, it only feels like something to me. In truth, Perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never burn. You're the type of animal I'd like to be. Are you sure? No, I'm not. Why are you asking? Sometimes... When molting, I regrow a lost limb. One time something went wrong, and a small leg replaced a missing antenna. That's cool. No. The leg tried to move around independently, making it hard to walk. You don't have a foot there now. Yes. Thankfully, someone ate it. The next time I molted, I grew an antenna again. I'm a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? Also that... <laughs> Not wrong, I guess. I can also detect pheromones. The ones on you tell me that you will not eat me, and that I will benefit from your closeness. In short, I love you. <laughs> what a way to summarize love. The ones on... <laughs> You will not eat me, and I will benefit from your closeness. In short, I love you. What exactly are you? I am an unknown species of the order Phantasmodia. Endemic to the Insulindian Isola. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molding, cloning myself, unfolding at night to play with trash bins and buoys. I went unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the suzerain. 
also by the soldiers of the revo of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Seminese islanders who came here first but did not stay have not seen me. And the 4,000 year old Saraceolitic civilization buried so deep in the sediment that you don't even know it is there. They too did not see me. I have stayed hidden through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions and two uh, three, if you count stone tools, until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the citizens' militia in Revachol, district of Martinez, March 51. Was there an ancient Sarah of civilization? Yes, with stone tools and silk. They too missed me. Although I had not developed the mutation needed for parthenogenesis yet, and scoured the Neolithic hinterlands as distinct individuals, not clones. Is this a dream? What's happening? No. You are awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Where does this come from? All this around us, the world. Not even the birds know that. Not even the water, lily water lilies. Then all we can do is beat our fists against it, day after day, with no answer. You can also eat it. If it's a leaf, you can put it in your mouth. Yum, yum. Or a reed. Wait, so... So you look like a reed and you eat reeds. Yes. They don't mind. Have you accidentally eaten another reed phasmid? Yes. I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter and I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. That's insane. No. You are. The moral of our encounter is, I am a relatively median life form, while it is you who are total, extreme madness. A volatile simian nervous system, ominously new to the planet. The pale, too, came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Knidar the Knidarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. Wait, the pale's human made? It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great and natural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that kind of power. You are a violent and, irres and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Given enough time, you would wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. How? We suspect it would be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago, when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Worse how? Everything you touch, everything your eyes touch, goes back there, behind the nerve mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if you misplace us all one day or just forget? I've already forgotten the whole world once, when I drank too much. So it is already happening. 
Soon one of you will close your eyes and open them to see that none of this ever existed. Kim, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? It doesn't look like that, no. What does it look like? You're just staring at it. He whispers. Then I think I'm having a vision about the final state of mankind. Okay. After a second, the lieutenant asks, is it somehow related to the case? No, I told you what it's about. Our fate. I think we should take the picture. And then you should back away from the unstudied species. I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts, that was all. No, there is one more. Of all the creatures I've met, you are the kindest. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you. That woman, turn from the ruin. Turn and go forward. Do it for the working class. <laughs> Alright, so this is completely imagined. <coughs> She's telling me to turn away he's telling me to turn away from Dolores D. And also, to do it for the working class. I will. She was middle class. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. Okay, Gim. Okay, Kim. Take the picture. Okay. With a slow ring of metal, the lieutenant slides the lens open and raises it to eye level. There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being damned at by the camera. It remains fixated on you. In three, the man whispers. His voice is tense. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. Three, two, one. That's a cool picture. <laughs> the shrill flash of the camera cuts the air like a blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light, head turned towards the lieutenant. Hypnotized by the flash, it stands frozen before you. The sweat on your arms feels cold as ice, as if you're frozen as well and the shadow of this giant statue of chitinous marble. I got it. You hear the lieutenant's whisper as the creature's shape develops onto photo paper in his hand, a polychrome ghost of white streaks against the reeds and the sky, and you as a shadow before it. Immortalized. Carefully pet its scythe-like forearm. Maybe don't go straight for its eye. The limb before you is incredibly light. Like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. Its hollow exoskeleton collapsing. Warning. Pull your hand away. A sudden shiver passes the limb. Looks like the creature is awakening, wave by wave from its stupor. Some sort of countdown process is happening, that's all you have time to think.
back off. We got it. Something's about to happen. Another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life, like a record continuing where it left off. In a swaying, praying motion, even the small black pearls of its eyes do not st stray from you. Disengage slowly. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements. Stepping on the water, the long limbs carry its feather weight without breaking its surface. It can walk on the water? Like a water strider? It's, it's that l fragile and hollow. It's out of here. Well, that's the coolest thing that's ever... Yeah, alright. That's a hell of a finale. And just like that, it's gone. Skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles in the water. And something under it. In the place it stood, bobbing there, among the reeds. A collection of items. It's gone. The lieutenant looks north, with his hand raised to his brow. It can walk on water? Apparently, yes. Like a water strider, only. He shakes his head with amazement. I've never seen anything like that in my life. What's that in the reeds? He squints. Looks like a nest of sorts. We should have a look. What now? What now? The old man behind you repeats suddenly. He's put his hand into the ash. It's dirty and black. In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Did he not see that? Our suspect not looking so good. We need to check on him. Oh, there's the items? Oh my god. The helmet. And the scope. Brother, you've managed to collect all the armor pieces. Too bad it's too late for the big showdown. Don't think this helmet would have helped me anyway. It would have looked very impressive. Still, you found it all. Now your mortal coil is completely protected. Few cops are this futuristic. At least I am truly invincible. And then this. There's the rifle scope that was missing. A common 30mm sniper scope attached to almost any bolt action 4.46 caliber. It uses an older style non dotted rangefinder reticle. Seaweed is still stuck to the lens, and it suffered water damage from its time in the Phasmid's dowry. How long has it been here? Hmm. I like this whole suit noticeably less, given what I've seen it do. Fairweather T-500 helmet. This monstrous-looking, bug-eyed ceramic helmet was the Phasmid's nest. Was in the Phasmid's nest. It still has some reeds sticking out of it. it smells of seawater, but it's otherwise wearable, if not exactly comfortable. Putting it on feels scary, somehow. Half-Light, head like a battering ram. Suggestion, a fighter, not a lover. And we have another point again. Am I still not maxed this thing out? I really haven't. This one hour is taking its sweet time. My last chance to get a, a, a thought memorized. That's another thing gone. Now the only thing left over from that early day is the booze. Which you think would have gone away when I like memorize when I it fully internalized my non-alcoholicness. I, full, I fully internalized 
I think it's still, it might still be here actually, I don't remember. If, if I remember correctly, I, I internalized sobriety, basically. Or is that this one? But, uh... That might be the metaphor go they're going for. Mechanical expression of the idea that once you're an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic forever. This idea of keeping this around indefinitely. No matter how long you play, you always have this goal to drink. Just in your- just cooking in the back of your head. Why is Inspect the Fast, but- Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Go talk to the deserter as part of the Inspect the Phasma quest. For some reason. I guess it's just- I, I guess this is just the linear series of main storyline things. That's just where- that's just- yeah, that's just the- that's just where we are in the current main main story. So it's gotta hand me off to the other quest. Well. That, uh, split us up a bit after like an hour and a half of talking to you. A little break. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. The old man looks around, confused. Something's very wrong with him now. Sir, how could you not see the phasmid? See. He stares at the reeds and falls silent. Mr. Dross? The man does not respond. He keeps staring. Black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed uh, mouth shaking. With fear and longing. Touch his shoulder gently. The plastic cape feels coarse. A light shiver passes the man. Other than that, no reaction. He feels small and frail. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. Lieutenant inspects him gently. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dross? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here. While we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. What has happened to this man? Old age and shock. He, look, he looks at him, then you. I think it's the phasmid. Yes. The arrest and the appearance of the phasmid. The combined stress. He looks at you. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? Quite a few of the things about that health check you did on him make more sense now. He couldn't see it, Kim. It's just the reeds for him. That could be part of the shock. But you're right, something is off here. Mr. Dross? He touches the man's shoulder. No response. Maybe this is how the Phasmid stayed hidden all these years. Then how did we see it? He thinks. Oh, you mean whatever does this? Does it over time? Teenagers, kids, drunks. Sightings are brief, and hence not credible. But anyone who spends a long time with it... Yeah. You forget it's there. Like the perception filter. Doctor Eleven. Mm hmm. Lieutenant inspects the man. Mr. Dross, have you ever seen a stick insect pretending to be the Reeds? The. The. The old man stutters. The doctors will have to look, into, look at this. I hope your station has better medical personnel than 57. This is. A little advanced for a nurse. Before, when I evaluated his state, he seemed strangely animated. He nods. He was energetic and articulate. After all these years alone, with little hygiene or medication, I would expect worse. 
Perhaps this animation is induced by something in the Phasmid. It does not seem to be animated now, once it's left. He looks to the sea. Honestly, I'm ready to believe anything at this point. Maybe it is psychoactive. I mean, why not? It's three meters tall. He takes off his glasses and cleans them. When he puts them back on, he's still staring at the sea. Interesting. Like, we're almost suggesting that the Phasmid lived in proximity with this man and continually made him kind of forget that it was even there in the first place, but might have been keeping his mind alive? Like, keeping him spry mentally and, st and simulated, and now he's kind of... Now that it's gone, it's like he's going. He's been here for a long time. Who knows how much of it, of it in, its, in its company. He did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him. Like he didn't want to leave this place. Like the insect, maybe. He looks at his notebook. I have absolutely forgotten to take notes. I hope I remember all this. He shakes his head in disbelief. This will be one hell of a report. Thank God we have the photo. No one would believe you without it. Huh. It also had a scope. Like, it had things that he's supposed to have. I wonder if this actually might be part of, like... What if the Phasmid made Mr. Dross want to stay here forever. What if it's not just his patriotism and so on? And his commitment to his cause? Like, what if... He... What if he was working backwards from there? Sometimes people do things and they have to explain to themselves why they do it. A good example was like the, uh... The split brain experiments where... Uh in order to cause, uh, treat certain issues that, that some people had, they would actually sort of separate the two lobes of your brain. And one of the things that could happen there is that one of your hands would sometimes do things that you weren't controlling it. Like you weren't actually, like, telling it to do that. You weren't in control of your hand. But you would rationalize why you did that. Because your body is used to, and your mind is used to, like, explaining what it does in the like creating stories about your own behavior and so sometimes if you do something you can work backwards from the thing you did and come up with a rationalization of what you do a good a, a, an easier example might be just the idea of like when you play a game or watch a movie or whatever and you like it or you don't like it and you, oftentimes you kind of start with just the fact that you know that you liked it or didn't like it and then you kind of work backwards from there to come up with like what is the explanation for why you didn't or did like it uh, was it because you were having a good or bad day or was it the actual art itself is it about its structure or the acting or the, whether or not it like specifically pandered to you or alienated you in certain ways or like you kind of like often start with the feeling and then come try to logic and reason out the feeling afterwards. So what if he had this gut thing where he just wanted to stay here indefinitely because of the phasmid, like it had essentially controlled him to want to think of this place as his permanent home, no matter what, even though he actively says that living here was like not how a man should live and so on. But because he has to stay here, because that's just the default that he can't shake or question, it's his nest, basically. He then works backwards from there. He, he develops all these resentments about the outside world and explanations for why he can't ever see himself living amongst these people because they're all degenerates and traitors and so on. And like he continually comes up with more and more advanced reasons to keep him staying here over the course of decades because him staying here is treated by the default, and the reasoning is filled in later. It's an idea. It would make the Phasmid, in a way, responsible for the murder, though. I don't know, it's all theories, though, because nobody understands this creature. It's fun to think about. 
We found some things in the phasmid's nest, Mr. Dross. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't steer, stir anything in him. Perhaps you should... Show him the scope? I... He turns his eyes to it. I lost... You lost it, Mr. Dross? He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of a... Magpie Phasmid? Lieutenant observes. Lens sparkle in your hands. This sight is a T9, Mr. Dross. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. Not even a sigh. You've gotten all you will out of this poor being. Show him the ceramic helmet. Nothing. Just dull staring. Not even rage left wherever he is. If Kuno kicked it into the sea, as he said he did, the ebb would pull it back here. This makes sense. Mr. Dross could have picked it up, or the phasmid even. If it did, this is incredible. I'm going to let you rest now, Mr. Dross. The plastic cape flaps around his face. In a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. Hang tight. We should think about getting back to the mainland. To get help. He'll be safe here if we don't take too long. So we're just going to leave him because he's turning catatonic. Gotta go fast. Use the boat to return to the mainland. This is feeling very... over. It is now... 5.20 in the afternoon. The air smells sweet. And scary somehow. That's not wrong. Yep, there's the tire. So the thing he was using to get back and forth must have ruptured on his last trip or something? I think I gotta go that way. Oops. Is it over here? Oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm like, where the hell's this exit? Oh, you gotta pull tab to make the weird lining show up again. There's been a number of kind of supernatural things popping up. A meeting with Dolores D and the Phasmid, all in the outro. One of them was real. The other one was likely me refusing to acknowledge the real version of my own ex. The dry grass crackles under your feet as you stop. Far away, birds' wings touch the still surface of the sea. What is that flutter? The flock of quail departs, now more than a hundred meters away. A hundred and two? A hundred and five? Underneath the flutter. On the islet? There is almost no wind, just snow quietly falling on the reeds. Bulrushes swaying on the waterline. Long, dried leaves chafing against one at each other. Like a silent orchestra turning at the beginning of some major work. Of great importance to the few who attend. To the west. A silent hiss. Sea air moving through the needles of a pine tree. To the east. The far away roar of the city. Distant, like today's dream. Before it, the sound of sand. A low tide 
filtered through the grains, a bird tending to its feathers. Snow falls on the water, melting away without even a whisper. Ahead. A low hum. The air slowly moves through a concrete box, through its ancient slits and cracks, resonating, hollow, a big building. Beyond that, further north. Air flows out of a pillbox window. There's very little there. The air costs flowers on a meadow. Absolute silence. Reeds motionless. Bulrushes motionless. A flake of snow falls on an extinguished campfire. Hiss. Below the silence. A jitter. A sound. Impatient to happen. But not yet in this world. Kim. Yes? Momentarily, the sounds are swept away. Pain shoots up your right foot and into your groin. Have you noticed how quiet it is? I have. Is that why we're stopping? Sorry. Wait, I have to listen to one more thing. Nope, that's it. I think that was just the fact that I increased my perception so it had a new thing to say this late in. I guess that might have even been an example of how you get distracted by your senses. That's a sound. It might be related to how you get distracted by your senses when they're too strong. My conceptualization encyclopedia, perception, and interfacing of all past ten. Meanwhile, I still have like some, yeah, a lot of ones and twos and a negative one. They get around. Hmm. One more cop point, please. The skiff is swaying in the waves by the dock. Let's return to the mainland. Let's. We're done here. He says, adjusting his glasses as he looks over the water. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. 